of a star. And today I will introduce a NIRS ecosystem. And uh, so uh, let's start discussing NIRS background. And, and as we know, this is a blockchain platform allowing developers and, uh, to build applications just like Ethereum and other uh, Solana or uh, Avalanche, other layer one protocols. And probably everyone here knows about Near, but uh, let's just go through its history. It's mainly the launch on uh, 2000, 2020, and, uh, and and actually, uh, they, they're, they they actually the team has uh, has launched their near protocol through three phases, but we we just ignore here and we directly uh, directly introduce. How it works and how this blockchain different with other layer one protocols, and, and we can see here near uses a sharing approach, and it allows the network to increase its capacity throughput, and finally, as additional node participate. So, so the aim of near protocol, but not not just not now. This is just their uh their aim is to achieve um hundred thousand TPS and at one million nodes and one second finality but but now what, what we can see here is the node uh there the currently there are 100 nodes in the near network so it's far from its goal it's far from its goal right there's a long way to go so and currently polygon polygon has around 65 uh, 65 000 tps and avalanche has around four Point five thousand TPS, and uh, and near, but but near is has a super cheap super cheap transaction fee, and you can see here is uh, zero point zero five, is is a super cheap thing other layer one protocols, and especially than Ethereum. That's why uh, it has some it, it has something that can compete with other layer one protocols. If uh, so, actually, if near near protocol. Reach it is final goal, just like a uh, hundred thousand TPS and one M nodes. It must, be, it, it might be the base. It might be the base layer one protocol in the world. I think from a te uh, technology, a technical perspective, super fast and and decentralized and super cheap. So uh, I think probably everyone, every Web three projects, are more likely to use their infrastructure. I think. But, but now uh, there's a long way to go. It's far from here. So, the, uh, and, and his, his fundraising is is very. I, I think it's very good. Is have it has raised a total of total of uh, one. It's a uh, total of nearly two hundred million dollars. It's one uh, one hundred and eighty three million dollars. It's over three rounds, backed by, and, and its backers are also very strong. And you can see here is three arrow capitals, three arrows capitals lead their uh, investment. And uh, A16Z, like Coinbase, uh, all of this uh, money coin capital, all of these uh, well-known crypto VCs are joined their uh, investment. So uh, the background of near protocol is, I think it is the uh, top tier. It's, it's among the top tier of all the layer one protocols, and has uh, ha and so we we can anticipate that in the future near will have uh, we will, will have uh, an expanding ecosystem, and just like a current mainstream layer one protocol like Avalanche and so on. So that's what we can anticipate from its background and from its finance, uh, from, from its uh, fundraise. So uh, let's continue our discussion. So um, after introducing this background, we can take a look at their statistics, on-chain statistics. So what happens, what, what happened, how, how near blockchain develops in the recent two years and uh, and how how many active users on their blockchain? How many 
unique accounts on your blockchain. This is this might be this data might uh, is what we care about now. So since Nier's main uh, it's mainly launched in the 2020, the number of total addresses on Nier blockchain has been growing very very fast. And I think uh, and you can see the picture on the right. This is the uh, Grows the picture just illustrate the growth of total number of new accounts, and you can see that start from 2021. Is has uh, it has ha, ha, has a super fast growing speed, right? So sometimes, and in, in the some it's like in the January to in January of 2022, it has uh, the the new accounts just exploded, and then uh, in the two uh, in the recent two years, near blockchain has reached uh, around five million unique addresses on its blockchain, and with an average of seven seven hundred thousand transactions per day. And currently, this is current data, but uh, you cannot see from the picture because we just take this data from its explore and near Western schedule so what we need to talk about is tokenomics uh, because as an investor we need to care about how the uh, how their token vests and how they just uh, arrange their uh, cir circulating supply and total supply the nearest Western schedule is predictable and the circulating supply it's growing nearly uh we can see the picture here is growing just linearly in the first several years it's the blue line the blue line under the underlying uh yeah and and we but, but we, we can anticipate that it will grow slower and slower in the future because there is a cap right there's cap the first line here there's a cap so um the genesis total supply is is one billion. Is when when is uh, when near near blockchain is deployed. It's mainly deployed. There is there is a one billion supply of near tokens on its blockchain, and the total supply will grow at a five percent and uh, five percent uh, five percent rate. You can uh, you can check here. This is not horizon. It's not uh has a line but it grow at a very slow at a very slow rate in five percent per year so so currently the total supply of near blockchain total supply of near token it's not just one billion it's more than one billion but uh but it grows slowly uh, this compare it with other their one protocol, so and we can better understand better understand underlying data on the near blockchain. So uh, we can see how to grow, how to how to grow in the recent two years, and compared to other their one protocols. So we we, we pick the avalanche, we pick avalanche and phantom because they are EVM compatible, and uh, they they have. Uh, they they have a, a good ecosystem, and they I think they can represent mainstream blockchains, public blockchains in the crypto space. And Ethereum is uh, just just like a signal, just like Bitcoin, uh, the uh, the total market, right? So Ethereum is uh, it's, it's like a signal of the layer one protocols. So um, in the recent uh, in in the last few uh, last twelve months. The number of unique addresses in the near blockchain has grown for uh, has grown five five uh, million five million and and compared to Avalanche and Phantom, it has doubled on near blockchain. So this is this is the uh, unique addresses, but 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 we can see that the recent daily active addresses. On their protocol is is far less than Avalanche and Phantom, which has seventy k. But near but on the near blockchain, there's just thirteen k. So uh, 
So I think the reason behind this data is neither blockchain doesn't have enough like DeFi or NFT applications for users to uh, for, for for users to be active on their uh, on their mainnet. You know, if there is a blockchain, you, you you can only just transfer your money from uh, outside and inside, and transfer your uh, your assets to other uh, other addresses. I think for a uh, uh, there won't be. I think there won't be a lot of active u data active users if there is no 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 uh, DeFi applications like Uniswap. It can just do some transactions. If there is a game like uh, Xfinity, there's a game. You there might be a lot of users play the game every day. So the active data active addresses might be very high. The data might be, uh, might be better than those don't have enough applications. So th that's what I think. But the recent dating transactions, they have almost the three layer one protocols almost, almost have the same have the same number here. So it it uh, it means that they the uh, activities on your blockchain transfers on your blockchain is um, is, is, is almost the same with Avalanche and Phantom. The inflation rate here means, so how many new tokens, how many new near tokens has been unlocked in the recent 12 months? So uh, 12 months ago, there are, uh, what, what, there, it's like there are th uh, three, 300 million, 300 million tokens, uh, near tokens, Circulate, circulating in the uh, circulating the market, but now uh, currently, as we can see, unlock ratio here is around uh, is around six sixty six percent for the of the total of the total supply are are circulating in the market. So in the last twelve, so in the last twelve months, the near blockchain and near token has been doubled in the uh in the market okay. but the price tra price change here we can just compare it with avalanche and phantom they are they almost have the same price change and uh, the current unlock ratio and the inflation rate the near and avalanche is also almost the same so that that's th i think this is a very interesting fact is is very interesting because uh, because we we can see that those public blockchains they are one protocols so all, almost have the same performance in the last twelve months so uh, that that's what the fundamental data the fundamentals uh, tell us how they uh, develop and how they evolved in the last twelve months. And we can have a uh, uh, ha have uh, uh, overview of NIR's uh, on chain activities and, and how NIR uh, grow in the last last twelve months. And so uh, let's continue. And, and let's just dive into the uh, ecosystem NIR's ecosystem, and we can uh, we start from the infrastructures. And we know that all of the layer one blockchains, you might think about uh, Solana or Avalanche, they they might have some ancillary infrastructure that help them to expand their ecosystem. Because, uh, for example, for example, Avalanche it has a P chain and has a C C chain, so we we know that the only C chain is EVM compatible, and there are so many like. Uh, Ethereum, Ethereum applications just uh, migrate from Ethereum to Avalanche. It can help them uh, expand their ecosystem. The near almost do the same thing here, and uh, and the first we can see is the Aurora. This is in the GCR's portfolio, and it is uh, you you can view it as uh, as a side chain or some something like a. a there are, there are two of the near protocol. So it's an Ethereum virtual machine created by the team behind the near protocol. So uh, it, it also belongs to near ecosystem. But 
it has its it has a uh, it has a has a coin has issued a coin itself, and uh, I think I think GCR's uh is in GCR's portfolio and has a, a very good performance. If we uh if we check the market price of Aurora and uh, the price we get into this deal. And currently, more than 70% active contracts and accounts are on Aurora since it's EVM compatible. This is one reason. And another reason that is easier for old developers and users to migrate. You know, the, the old, I mean, the old developers means that the developers that are familiar with uh, EVM, like they might be the uh, old users on Ethereum blockchain or uh, like uh, Binance, Smart block, Binance Smart Chain or uh, Avalanche, all of these find them or all of these are EVM compatible and Polygon, right? So, uh, so I think Aurora here is, uh, plays an important role, a very, very important role in the NIRS ecosystem. It just help, helps other applications and it attracts a lot of new uh, developers and users. So, so developers and users uh, d d don't need to just learn something new, just nerdy uh, programming language that can uh, that that can create new contracts or create applications on your ecosystem. Uh, we as as we know that near near blockchain is wrote by by uh, Rust, even though this programming language is by Rust is I think is safer than than. Uh, the, the other language, but is uh, is a little bit hard for the, for a lot of developers. And another infrastructure that help near blockchain grow is uh, expand its ecosystem is it is uh, Octopus network is a sidechain network to host Web three application specific blockchains around near protocol. And the third one is Rainbow Bridge, so. Is uh, I have I, I I think this this bridge is very fast and it's very user friendly. It's, it it bridges bridges near blockchain and Aurora and uh, Ethereum. You can you can uh, you can just try it. It's very 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 user friendly and I think it's cheap. So compared to other bridges like Avalanche Bridge and uh, uh, the bridge that that uh, the the bridge built around Solana. So this is the uh, NIRS, uh, its infrastructure that built, built around NIRS ecosystem to help its ecosystem's growth. So uh, let's go to the next page and you can see the NIRS DeFi ecosystem. The DeFi, the DeFi ecosystem on your blockchain now uh, is not, uh, currently it's not very, uh, the TVL currently is not, it's not, it's not very good. The, it's just ranking uh, 13 place among public blockchains. And we can see the data here. So this data, data is, uh, I got this data from, uh, from, the, uh, from this link. So it's a DeFi dashboard. And most TVL in near ecosystem are uh, in, in Aurora. And because a lot of, uh, currently a lot of, a lot of uh, DeFi applications are built on are built on Aurora. It is EVM compatible, and total value locked on their ecosystem is around just one point sixteen billion. So, uh, it's, there, there are only twenty five DeFi applications in your ecosystem. But but I need to mention here is we can just we can see some signals. Of the market attention, you you can you can see that these three DeFi applications they all built on Aurora and seven hundred mil, seven hundred million TVL are a uh, seven hundred million TVL is in just these three applications. So compared to the total TVL in the ecosystem, just one billion. So what 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 can we see from that from this fact? And you can see the backer here. The uh, the the I think they are all uh, top ventures. 
on in a crypto space. So so I think it is a good signal that that these uh, these ventures these venture capitals might help Aurora or help near to uh, expand its DeFi ecosystem and to help them attract more DeFi users because they they have uh, just like what they do. Uh, just like what they did in the last two years on Ethereum blockchain, I think this DeFi summer will someday DeFi summer will come to the will, will come to Nears uh, will come near ecosystem. As we have a lot of we we, we got a lot of uh, strong backers here. So based on is uh, based on that if, if near blockchain has has. Uh, has a lot of uh, has capital so it, it has capital it has tvl and it has fast speed it has fast speed and cheap and, and low cost it has a good user experience so combine these two what will what will we get in the future there's a there might be a very user-friendly DeFi ecosystem on your blockchain and you can see that enough liquidity and the low transaction fees, so uh, that's what we can anticipate in the uh, maybe in the near future, maybe uh, one or two years later. And and currently from this data, we can see that it is that the other mainstream layer one protocols like Avalanche and Phantom uh, has uh, has a better performance and better uh, better current status. You know there are more than one hundred DeFi protocols, and with TVL it's ten billion and six billion. So, uh, but but the application tabs, I think they are almost the same with other layer one protocols, and the above two are lending and stable swap, and this one is uh, this one is the DEX just like Uniswap. So they might be the same, but has a different, but I think has has different user experience because. The underlying infrastructure infrastructure is quite different with with other layer one protocols. So uh, just let's, let's just just see in the future. And and nearest blockchain and for the game game and NFT and, and NFT market. So nearest NFT and game ecosystem, I think uh, currently is 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 quite small. And are not as uh, as big as Ethereum's or other mainstream layer ones. Just like uh, Solana's NFT has a uh, has a very good performance, and they already in, have already ingrained uh, into the like OpenSea. And you can just buy you you, you might buy uh, buy uh, Solana's NFT just directly from the OpenSea's platform. But 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 for years. NFT marketplace, we can just anticipate the trends. You know that that if you if you have uh if you have used Polygon and uh you know there's there's a lot of NFT and game projects are uh, more likely to build on Polygon because it's fast, fast speed and cheap transaction fees. And this is a necessary necessary condition for the for the expanding and user experience. Of NFT and game market, right? So, um, so we so but but currently, near ecosystem is very it's very early. We don't uh, we cannot see there's some like exploded or uh, super big NFT marketplace or a, a famous uh, game fight application built on your blockchain. But just wait and see in the future, right? So uh, specifically, there are two nearest NFT marketplace are in the, in our portfolio. I think uh, I think some investors might have uh, get into these deals. There are endemic and nifty comedies. So uh, you guys can just take a look on their uh, on their current development and to take a look that how they uh, how they might evolve in the future. Or for endemic, I think it is uh, is is uh, is very uh, is user friendly. is uh, is very fast. If you take a look on its platform, just like super rare, is um, but has more fun functionalities. 
and is faster than super rare because it's built on uh, built on Aurora. So, uh, so another thing that I I I think it is uh, I have to mention here is about U USN. So for Outlook, so what will near be the next will will near be next exposure layer one? For, uh, for, from the pre previous slides, we can we can uh, have a, just have an overview of of nearest technology and current development status and the C code systems. We we can anticipate that if near blockchain, so get closer to its final goal, just like one hundred thousand. TPS with uh, with one M with one M nodes on its ecosystem. It's just like it's a super uh, super fast and super cheap layer one layer one protocol in the future. We, we can anticipate there might be a lot of uh, good applications, a lot of excellent applications on their ecosystem. But another thing that is maybe uh, maybe closer to us that might happen in the near future is is the roadmap. A near protocol is set to launch a stablecoin just called USN. Is the news uh, news has been announced recently, right? What so so when I heard about this, what comes to my mind first is what comes to my mind is the UST. The USN UST, you know, if you have used if, if you heard about Luna product Luna a Terra ecosystem, you, you know that UST has a lot of market attention recently because the uh, Luna price, the Luna's price has uh, Luna's price has increased significantly in, uh, in recent days. So what what make uh, and the the finance behind it is is uh, the UST and Luna. Luna cycle. There, there is a there's an analyzing mechanism that support the growth of UST, and then the uh, the team behind behind the Luna protocol will uh, Luna protocol use the use the fund that they earn to buy more Bitcoin to support the to support the growth of UST. So, uh, by just uh, just by this uh, iteration, and it just continues this process. The UST will be more, uh, will, will grow, uh, will, will be more and more in the future, and the price of Luna also, you know, they just have a buyback plan, will grow in the, in the uh, will will be, um, will increase significantly in in the in the future. And it, we have seen from history, uh, have have seen from the recent uh, two years that Luna's what Luna's price, what what happened to Luna's price. Uh, almost two hundred x, right? So, so, uh, so the you the, the, so now near blockchain, the near protocol, it's going to launch a stable coin called USN. So how how they design this USN? This is the question we might think about, right? Uh, so if near USN plays the same game with UST, so which will be the anchor protocol on near? So what will what what will they what will happen to the to the new, uh, the token price? What will happen to the uh, like the APR? You, you know that there, there is a uh, this fact. I just I, I I have to predict that USN will at least have a 20 percent APR because we can just derive this from the from what happened to UST. It's, uh, it's like the Terra ecosystem, and, and then top exchanges will support USN. So, so, um, so here I, I recommend re I recommend you guys to uh, to read some history or to do some research on Luna ecosystem. Maybe I, I will introduce Luna in the uh, the next time and compare compare how how this uh, how the finance behind the Luna works, and, and we can just anticipate something. So, something that uh, might happen in the future might happen to USN in the future. So if, if this is true, if if the if the team behind near protocol just run USN the, similarly to the 
tier UST. And we, we, we might see a uh, we, we might see a 10 billion TVL milestone achieved soon. Why? Because there is 20 percent APR of stablecoin. So a lot of like uh, a lot of users, DeFi users, will deposit their stablecoins in their uh, in, in your ecosystem. And we have TVL now. The mouse, milestone will be reached very soon. So they got they they got more users. They got more users. They got more revenue. And if they do similar similar thing with uh, with the team behind Luna, they will buy side. They, they will have something like a buyback plan, or have something to uh, to incentivize the uh, growth of their ecosystems. So it will just make so what we can see, what 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 we can, uh, what will happen to your token price. I think this is an easy problem, right? Uh, another another thing that we uh, we can anticipate is the coin base listing. So near blockchain has a lot of strong backers, and it has a growing, has, has an expanding ecosystem. But uh, for the CX li listing, the Coinbase hasn't list near near token. So uh, so what I think is Coinbase might list near in the near near future. Might be very soon, I think, because the uh, uh, DC DCG group like. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if this group or Grayscale uh, has already uh, by uh, has already get into a uh, near uh, near token uh, uh, recently. So it's a third is is uh, is a third position. So uh, I I can uh, I can anticipate that there's a lot of uh, top VCs might uh, might help. Help the growth of NERS ecosystem and the market attention to them should also grow very fast. So uh, we might we might got a near half in the near future. So uh, so my conclusion here is uh, the next exploded near one protocol. I think it might be it might be near protocol compared to other uh, uh, compared to, to to other layer one uh, layer one protocols. Just like a uh, cello we discussed last of time. I think I think cello blockchain is also uh if no cello is also very promising. But uh but I, I think it should be slower than near blockchain. So given the current current statistics and the current uh current data. So this is uh this is today's uh, introduction of the near blockchain ecosystem. So uh if if you guys has if you guys has any any questions, you can just share it share it with me. Or you can tap in the voice range. Uh, this is Vivek. Uh, thanks for the presentation, by the way. Um, when you are comparing this near with the uh, Avalanche and, and other yeah, LN yeah. blockchains, Avalanche do have deflammatory mechanism built in and chain. So do any of the listed, or specifically near, do have any deflammatory mechanism built in on the layer one itself? Because that's that stand out for me because Avalanche is uh, is Avalanche had the hard supply of seven twenty million, even though it has even though the fifty two percent is just being unlocked, still it has forty eight percent, which is which we can consider for inflation, but but it, it do have deflation. I think currently one million. Avalanche is completely burned. So, do we have any such thing currently, or is there anything uh, coming? So, uh, so I mean the uh, inflation rate of Avalanche, right? I'm saying that Avalanche has deflation mechanism. Oh, uh, Avalanche has deflation. Uh, I, uh, I think I don't. I don't think so. The they have a lot of. Uh, 
this is currently just f uh, just a and fifty percent of the uh, total supply has been unlocked. So uh, if they all of these tokens are uh, is unlocked, so we, we might take five to ten years, I think. So so at least in near future, we can. It, it is an inflationary model of these tokens. This uh, this is what I, uh, what I think. But for total supply. I, I think in the long maybe uh, in the long run there is a that they might have a, that they are basically a deflation deflationary model I think because they they have some burn mechanisms if I if if I'm not wrong okay yeah so so in the near future you cannot just you cannot take a uh, view it as a deflationary model as as they tell you tell you. Because, because they they are just fifty percent of the total total supply unlocked. So, uh, a lot of new tokens, new coins will will be unlocked, will unlocked and uh, circulated in the, in the secondary market. So, if if you buy buy their tokens because it has a different model of the total supply, you might just get uh, got a loss here because um, new new tokens. That those people who got new tokens are are super early investors or a team that has a super low cost than you, yeah. And and along with Aurora, basically that uh, your support EVM or EVM compatible uh, to Aurora. Is there any specific reason that near like the separate token? Instead of using maybe a wrapped mail there, because if if you look at other chains, specifically Avalanche, even on the C chain, the primary gas token is still Avalanche. So, but Near do have two tokens. One is Near and for Aurora, which is an EVM EVM chain. Which I don't know why why there there needs to be a two token for for, for a single blockchain. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that's a just. No, I'm not going to say it. Sorry. Okay. I I I think that's a good question because uh we uh one thing is Aurora is like a layer two protocol of a uh, layer two protocol of near blockchain. It's just like the re their relationship could be like a uh, polygon with uh, Ethereum, but but uh, I, I don't know why the team just issued two tokens. That they they basically have the same team, right? The near blockchain has a coin, a usual coin called near, and, and Aurora has its own uh, token just circulate on their platform. But as we can see from current, uh, currently I can we can see that near token is also a uh, it's also circulating on their blockchain. There's a lot of near uh, on Aurora protocol. So so basically, Aurora is a uh, is, is is almost uh, they, they almost have, have have no differences. But but uh, I think the team might have uh, have other cons have other considerations. I, I think M might be uh, they they might they might think about that in the future. In the future, there are a lot of other blockchains that are uh, that will be in integrated into the near near protocol, or just other platforms that will be uh, uh, integrated in their ecosystem. So it's like there's there's a lot of new uh, ecosystem just join the Ethereum ecosystem. So Ethereum has has a unique uh, unique kind just ETH, but but there are a lot of layer two protocols like. Uh, Polygon, and we have uh, we have just like uh, other layer two protocols also issue its own uh, plat its, its own protocol coins, its native coins, right? So so uh, this is uh, what what I can uh, what 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 I'm wrestling about uh, about the, the team behind the RR and your protocols. So. So, uh, but but for users, I think for Web three users, it's not very important because we know we know they all uh, capped. Uh, they 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 all have a capital supply, right? 
they have um, and we just use their platform don't care about that if they are the same coin or two different coins it doesn't uh, I, I think it doesn't influence our user experience yeah i agree it doesn't influence the user experience but yeah 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 i mean as a user i mean it makes us to think that as a user now i want to how oh, i'm bullish on near if i want to hit if i want to ride the wave I really don't know which which coin really does well. Either the near, which of course it is, but maybe Aurora because it's it's where the actual EVM is, right? So from an investor standpoint, it, it actually might get a bit confusing to pick which one is is right for them if I am bullish on here. So yeah. So, uh, so sorry, your your question is that Aurora might be the. Uh, so can you repeat that? Yeah, I mean, I'm saying that from a, from an investor perspective, I it's kind of a little bit confusing to pick which pick uh, which which coin. So either it's Near or it's either Aurora. So that, that's my. Oh, okay. Not I have any questions at this point. So. Oh yeah. Uh, I understand. So, so I think actually we can just buy both, <laughs> right? If, if, I, if I just uh, look forward there to the to the success in the future, we we just buy both 50-50, right? And because uh, if if Aurora uh, is the biggest, like this is the one protocol in the future, then near blockchain uh, is is as is in the near ecosystem, and the near tokens also circulated on their blockchain. And a lot of applications on Aurora that has a uh, demand of uh, of near near tokens, just like Ethereum. If uh, a lot of layer two protocols uh, has a good performance, then then Ethereum will also has a good performance, right? Because they have they, they have demand for transactions, so they, finally their transaction will be uh, will appear on an Ethereum blockchain and net, right? So so uh, so near block a uh, near token is. I think dominate uh, Aurora tokens, but but in the in the short future, I think a short period, the Aurora token will uh, I think is worth to invest because it's EVM compatible, and for project, by for project leaders, they will first choose to de deploy their uh, their projects on Aurora box, uh, Aurora protocol, but not just directly deploy their protocol. Uh, and uh, near mainnet because there, there, there's no user that are familiar with their uh, mainnet uh, as the specification, right? So uh, if I, I'm the investor, I will buy 50-50. Okay, cool. Thank you. That's it for me. Thanks. So, uh, you guys have any other questions? Now, one has any question? Question: What exactly is Octopus Network? It's like in a side chain to near. What exactly is that? If you can touch base, that'd be good. You mean the? Uh, okay, I see. So, you mean the side chain network to host the Web three uh, application specific blockchains, right, around your protocol? Uh, you might have to know that near near protocol is uh, is based on the. Uh, I think there are a lot of power chains. It, it's based on sharding, you, you know, sharding approach, right? Sharding approach that they, they just uh, combine a lot of side chains together and to make them uh, 
ecosystem, like chain ecosystem, a lot of shard, a lot of sharding, separate shardings, and combine them to reach a uh, uh, reach a super good performance. That that is the uh, idea of sharding. But I think this side chain network is just a specific chain that to uh, to allow some like industry level uh, applications or uh, some again specific blockchains to 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 build around near protocol, but just but not just like Aurora. Aurora is is, a, is more like a crypto native blockchain, but but there are also some other applications that we call it a specific application specific blockchains. So just like uh uh some Ethereum uh, just uh business uh, uh some some. Blockchain built for uh, for for Web two businesses, or some built for the uh, games, or specifically built for games. I think this is the fu functions of the uh, of this uh, Octopus network. But but I, I have no uh, I, I have not deep dive onto this 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 network. Maybe I, I will share some additional insights if I have done some research on it. So but but we can oh. guess that. This, this functionality. Thanks. Yeah, that's information that was, yeah. I can also take a look. So I think uh, if we don't have additional questions, we need to end this meeting. And the next time, I might introduce something like uh, Luna or uh, Terra and combine these other one protocols to give you a, a overview and, and to uh, teach you how, how to predict the development of their one protocols from, from their uh, life, from, from this news. Thanks. Thanks for this presentation. It really helps. Thanks.